we're back. Hey guys, welcome back to Two Girls, One Bong. The podcast that's better if you're stoned and if you're not, I'm just going to disappear for two months and not upload anything. My name is Mac Dizzle. I'm Joya. You might recognize us from your favorite viral video or you might have been watching our content for the last nine years. If you're new here, welcome. If, uh, As my <laughs> lovely co-host said, we are the original two girls. We've been making content together for almost a decade under this name. Um, And yeah, we slay. We slay hard. We slay so fucking hard. Let's dive on in. Harder than the average bitch. Oh, most definitely. In. That's There's no doubt about that. We definitely slay harder than the average bitch. Four score and six minutes ago. Oh, I... <laughs> You, we need to start with a uh, bong rip. Okay. Before I, we do anything, I actually, get it ready. I actually brought my rig. Don't even speak. Don't even speak. Fucking get it ready. And we will not talk until we've smoked. Starting now. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Are you fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to turn mine on. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Oh, I love this noise. Oh my god, did you ever win the quiet game as a kid? No? I don't think so. Probably, <laughs> probably not. Hurry up. Uh oh. I'm ready. Go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> I'm kind of having a little bit of regret starting out the episode like this. Oh, wow. That was incredible. <coughs> Fuck. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Look, we're like two minutes in and we're already high. That's This is like a gotta be some kind of record for us. I would agree, especially... <coughs> Fuck. Especially the size of that dab. That I just took. Do you remember how we used to start every single one of our videos with an exhale? Yes. Yes, I do. Every single one. Time. And what <laughs> what a branding moment. Can I can we just talk about how fucking genius Mac Dizzle's brain is? Because ob- i we all know. We all know that didn't come from me, obviously. Just a genius I idea. Mean, it was just it, it. It doesn't translate as genius anymore. It was just every. I felt like every YouTuber had their introduction shtick, mm-hmm. and I just kind of tweaked it to be a bong rip instead yeah. of the same. We didn't say the same thing every single time. I don't think. Maybe we did. I think just I don't even welcome back how, like let, to two girls. Welcome one back to two girls one bong today. Like I don't even know if that's. I'd have to go back and rewatch it. Yeah. That oh would God. be honestly so fun. We've said that for so long that we should go back and watch our watch our old stuff, but we should do a reaction. We video, need to do reactions sure. like for sure. That being said though, elephant in the room, we've been gone for a bit. We took a little little breaky break. It was a gorgeous little breaky break. Everyone needed it. Everyone. You know. It was so good. And, and also, during our great. breaky break, we got to hang out in real life and spend time together in real life and film other YouTube videos for both of our channels. So if you haven't seen all of that content, I still have one in the vault. Hopefully, it'll be out by the time this podcast comes out, I guess. I I, hope. I forgot about that yeah, one. Yeah, I know. I'm so sorry. I literally just uploaded it onto my computer yesterday. Um, but... We have so much content together. Even though we didn't have the podcast, we still had so much content together um, for the time that we've been away. So, yes. And if this is out, so you know our hundredth episode is out as well. Yes, and that's what that means. And I hope you guys enjoyed the fuck out of that because we whipped out all of the doodads and the technology and the cameras and the mics for that one. And it was a lot of work. And the lung capacity. Three cameras running. Yeah, one, two, yeah, yep, three cameras running. Three cameras. So let's also give a round of applause to our editor, Dev, for putting all of that together. So it's three cameras, three cameras, and the audio file. There was one, yeah, then the audio file, which had, which, which, mind you, you had to reline up with every single clip when we did this. Oh my God. It was a lot of work. I'm not even going to get into it, but it was a lot of work. And she deserves her flowers, and we're so grateful for Dad. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Uh, has anything shocking or exciting that the people need to be updated about happened in the last two months? I mean, 
I did write down a few things that came to mind as super quick, and one of them was that fucking okay. Trump got shot. That kind of happened like a month ago now. Oh, shit. Dude. He did get nicked in the ear. He got nicked in the ear. Did you see that picture of him getting onto a flight and his ear looks totally fine? Yes, I did. I But I have to be weary about yeah. things. You know what I mean? Things that are like really... Um, yeah like making crazy claims like that because I'm like, I feel yeah. like it's probably an old yeah. photo that somebody pulled and whatever. But yeah, I mean, that's hey, valid. why don't we just look it up right now and see picture of Trump's ear with no, with no injury. And maybe it was just, and it's been a month, so maybe it is fine. Maybe. Okay. Donald Trump's it, ear has completely ch- healed one day ago. Wait, these are all like fucking international, fucking like random Australia, India. Oh God! Like, so they're American? like not even like. Um, he's seen without his ear bandage. I mean, two. Okay, so we we also know that isn't cartilage one of the things that heals the fastest? Like that's why we put. Yeah, like, I don't think. I think if he just got grazed on the ear, I yeah. don't think it would take that long to heal. Yeah, right. It could be like the inner inside like closer to the head it could be like on the inner ear where you wouldn't be able to really see it so much from yeah a, a profile yeah and i Anyways, mean i think i think that was a setup i don't think it was a thing by the trump campaign i think the guy was way too close to hitting him in the fucking dude brain the for fucking it a setup dude yes i completely agree because when it happened i was like oh he fucking got missed by an inch like they set that shit up now he's the fucking hero now he looks like this amazing because he turned his head at just the right dude, moment the 3d yeah. like the 3d the yeah. recreation or whatever oh my god i was like yeah. and and it's like kind of it's one of those things too i had this moment of like when it first happened it was kind of like oh they just barely missed like oh you almost got the bad guy but it's like that dude, comes to civil war joy literally could you imagine like so it, it actually that, killed trump it could have possibly caused a civil motherfucking 100 percent. and i had a moment of like I'm oh so my god he did not die me too oh my me god too because uh, also, like me taking up arms, defending the West Coast. Can you imagine? Please. I mean, damn, if there was a fucking. Okay, this is so funny because I just had this overwhelming feeling of like, oh, my God, if there was a war being fought against the West Coast, like I would fucking suit up and get my ass over there and defend <laughs> my homeland. And I have never not once felt that about like the entire country <laughs> but just hearing you say that i'm like oh my god just like, the way- you need to remember that california is in a, in, in america technically yes. one of the united states right. so by default you have to go protect it right and i know? would and i would if somebody was yeah. fighting against yeah. california well and so no i mean like if it was well, like another country by default if you're fighting against america you are fighting against me at this point yeah. i don't care if, it, if you hit new york your your bigger goal is to come get the West Coast. Yeah. You are not my also, friend. Also, okay, when I went to um have you ever been this is so random, but when I went to New Orleans, we went to the World War II Museum and it was like fucking phenomenal. I'm like I don't consider myself typically a museum person and I was like blown away. I guess like when I really think about it, I do. I have enjoyed my time at most museums, but it was really amazing. There's these parts where they're like going into the deeper history that we like weren't taught in school. You don't know? really learn exactly yeah. like details, and they tell us that like there was like freaking like war battle happening like a hundred miles oh, off this of the coast. <laughs> like we thought it never yeah. came here. We thought we were always you know we were everywhere or Hawaii obviously, but yeah, like yeah, dude, like there was fucking battle like just like right out in the ocean basically and it's kind of crazy to think about that like do you remember that youtube video we watched where we saw like the entire world versus the u.s yes i've told and the US, so many people honestly about that. Would, would probably they would probably get worn down after months of war we would go down motherfucking swinging and taking bitches dude out it's so crazy too how like in general like okay i just felt like my you know my my pride for the west coast i do also have that pride for the u.s when we're talking about like 
being um, other countries yes. dissing us or yes. whatever but it's when true. they're talking about like this election i'm so fucking embarrassed yeah dude totally it's like oh my god like being a fucking american right now is so like dude we look so fucking dumb we look so, so cringy dumb to be an american yes. right now it's so fucking cringy fucking and also kamala had megan the stallion shaking ass at her fucking rally and donald trump doing? had hulk hogan ripping his shirt off and fucking kid <laughs> dude like like, it's just so like dude it's so embarrassing but but <laughs> probably from other countries probably watch these rallies and they're like what is going on over there 100% they do 100% <laughs> especially like i feel like but like, literally as somebody who's here i'm just like i don't know i do, i actually don't know what the fuck is going on here it didn't used to be like this yeah it didn't used to be like this yeah well, I think it was I think it was probably always a little bit embarrassing, but it's definitely gotten worse. I was um with the celebrities doing performances at rallies is I feel like that's a newer concept. Definitely, definitely. I feel like celebrities would endorse well, people and prob- like speak, but yes, like doing performances but not performing. I feel like might be a newer thing cuz it's yeah. The Definitely. lack of professionalism for me. It's, yeah, it's 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 is this a show? I mean, everybody's or a rat? what are everybody's we? fighting for the young vote. Like that's yeah like, yeah yeah. But what is Megan the Stallion gonna do for my taxes? Uh no yeah not much, not much. That's that's why I'm here at the rally. Not, I want right, to hear right. But it's about the emotional connection that it that it because you if you have yeah, an emotional. No, and don't get me wrong. I fucking love Megan. Yeah. I love Megan. I definitely have an. Emotional and I would go to that connection. rally because Megan was there. Yeah. Anyways. But it's not it's not relevant to what's going on. It's a totally different thing. So. LOL at me being like, did anything significant happen in the last two months, like four historical events? Dude, everything. <laughs> Biden dropping Biden out. dropped out Harris too. being <laughs> a nominee. I'm like, yeah. did anything happen? Yeah. Bro, I just like, trauma blocked that shit in the back of my brain. Ooh. Rajul came home the other day wanting to like know what was going on. And I was like, I'm going to talk about this one time with you. And then we do not talk about this in the house anymore because I simply cannot. Mm-hmm. I consume enough of it online. I just can't do it. Yeah. And I told him what was going on. And um, yeah, it's a fucking circus, bro. It is a circus. It really is. It's a. Cir- it's like Blueface and Krishan Rock, if they were in politics. It's like that level of drama. Yes, something. It's that's what I was gonna level say. Of fucking drama. We are so desensitized to these like insane, crazy things Literally, happening. Trump got like almost assassinated, and I forgot. Yeah, like that's like old news. That was a month ago. Yeah like so crazy uh yeah um, i can't wait to be one of those old ladies that they interview in documentaries for the youth and they're like so what was what were you doing the day that trump got shot and i'm like i don't fucking know bro honestly after it happened i just kind of dissociated for a while yeah you know? that was and that's gonna be my interview yeah i just kind of separated myself like we live in that. a dystopian nightmare right now what is going on yeah. it's so weird it's is there a glitch in the matrix? Is there's a glitch? There's a glitch. There's definitely there's a, glitch. a glitch. There has to be. What how what other explanation is there for what has been happening? It's, yeah. I packed a bowl. And that's so good for you. I'd love to see you rip it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was an invitation for you to also do it, but I, I see you there. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let's let's give our let's give our watchers and listeners a chance to pack a bowl and take a rip with you, since I can't. So we here. honestly just pause, pause the fucking video. Grow up. I'm I'm taking the hit. Thank you. Love you. And come back. Uh, she's crazy. I knew when I took that dab, it was going to be too fucking much for me. But of course, Mac Dizzle is, yep, right back to it, baby. God <laughs> damn. Uh, you know what? I'd like to, I'd like to revisit something because several months ago when I was on here saying that my, um, <coughs> tolerance isn't as high anymore or i mean it's too high i'm sorry and i need to take a tea break see i'm high as fuck i can't even talk i said i wanted to take a tea break and you were like you don't need to take a tea break you just need to take fatter rips and i was like yeah you're probably right actually and that's crazy advice it is crazy what is what is who is that who's that's 
that's a crazy person speaking to you. Yeah. That's not a person giving you good advice. No, I that's mean, bad it, it doesn't need to be. It, anyway, it continue, is bad continue. advice. Continue. It is bad advice <laughs> overall. <coughs> but it's like addict behavior. Oh, you're, the meth isn't getting you high. Do more meth. It's not meth. It's weed. So, it's yes, I agree with meth. you. Yes, I agree with you. But also, it's not meth. It's weed. weed. So, I feel like there is a difference. Yeah. But there that, is a line. That's a big, but still, yeah, that's a bit. It is a giving tweaker tendency, though. Yeah, I mean, tweaker tendency. Honestly, things a tweaker would say that we, yeah, I don't know if we've ever. I'm sure we at some point had to have talked about how or debated whether or not weed is, you know, addictive. They say it's not. This funion, this funion is so fucking stale. Stale. I thought you were gonna say it's so. Can you good. hear the crunch? How bad it is? Yeah, it was like almost non-existent. It almost didn't even happen. Yeah, it's bad. Anyways, so what were you, we ADHD? Something happened. You were talking about something, and I stopped and interrupted you. You did interrupt me, but I can't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> um. Oh, weed being addictive or not? Like because no, that wasn't it. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Okay, sure. Which I feel yes, like you're is right. a big conversation. Oh, is weed addictive? It's habit forming. But right. you're not going to have physical withdrawals in the sense that your body is addicted to it. Like and when you, you yeah. if you're an alcoholic, you can't just right. like if you're a really severe alcoholic, really severe alcoholics, they can't just stop drinking. They have to be weaned off of it because their body has become dependent on it yeah while i would just say that weed is extremely habit forming um definitely borderline addictive because of the level of habit forming that it is but i think the i guess people do say that they have physical withdrawals when they smoke stop smoking like they have mood issues sometimes headaches things like that i've heard that um Definitely mood issues, I can attest to for sure. But I feel like it probably doesn't last very long. Like, I feel like it probably lasts like three days and then that's it. Maybe not even that long. Yeah. Definitely habit forming though. But if you, yeah, if you look at it like on the same level of like like nicotine. Oh, oh my God. Not even close. Not even close. Yeah, I would think it's a lot easier to quit weed than it is. as somebody who has had nicotine before you had like your little like two month period well i where you would like get drunk and you would like yeah but i don't i don't consider myself like i didn't ever have and to the get vapes, off of it honestly it's yeah. the vapes it that people have a really that, hard time kicking it breaks my heart like everyone that i know that is addicted to nicotine wants to quit and no one can and it's so sad it really it really makes me so sad like i yeah. know that like even i was literally one of somebody that we both know very closely has been trying to quit nicotine for a long time and they have had Mm -hmm. such a hard time and it's like a cycle and everybody that i know that i talk to about it says the same thing like it's so hard and yeah it is the vapes Mm -hmm. it's it doesn't smell you don't have to go outside you can hit it at freaking work all day hit it in your house like yeah you can hit it yes like so there's hardly any inconvenience to it besides having to buy it and then, like, I mean, I guess, like, having to get up and go get it when you... But that shit is so addictive. It's crazy. Like, it's nuts. I always say I'm so grateful to not ever have, like, gotten addicted to that. Because I swear to God, it is the gnarliest shit. Nobody that... I've never met anybody that's, like, successfully quit and stayed off of it. I'm so grateful that nicotine makes me feel sick. Yeah, like, me too. Like, it actually genuinely makes me feel nauseous. I went to Completely a bar agree. once... Yeah. The last time I ever went to a hookah bar and, and smoked hookah, I threw up in a bush. And that was when I was 18. I never did it again after that because what the fuck? Uh-huh. I, I have the it same so reaction. Um, that's so – I have this – or I, I don't have it anymore, but I was – I have a picture of a friend puking up four loco on the side of somebody's garage. We're like 15. I wasn't drinking. She, she was. We were smoking hookah and she was drinking four loco and I she – puked bright red onto the skies the side of his garage and i had a picture of it like coming out of her mouth anyway <laughs> um 
I have the same physical reaction to vape, hookah, even. Okay. And you know what? This goes so far back because I was 14 years old. I went to an Eminem concert. Might have even been 13, actually. I went to an Eminem concert and it was like outside, but it was like just one big crowd. It wasn't like an arena or something. It smelled so bad, like beer and cigarettes, that I was nauseous the whole time. And it could have been the beer. It could have been, you know, it was definitely a combo, like combo, both not not too. just the cigarettes. Yes, it was in August, and it was in Fontana, which gets so fucking hot. Um, but what are we doing? Yeah, so I was miserable the whole time. I still had fun because I was like such a big Eminem fan, but like I was physically miserable the whole time. Mm-hmm. And that's the same feeling that I get if I Oh my god, when we were in Thailand, we bought a joint and he and it has he, nicotine. Yes, it had echo in that Did drink. I tell you about that? I don't think so. Maybe you did. He put like, he like ran. So he rolled us two joints and then he like ran out of weed for the second one. He wanted to make it bigger. So he just put tobacco in there. Like didn't ask me or anybody. I think if he would have asked either of us, Adam would have been like, yeah, no, like whatever. I am freaking hitting this. And I felt so uncomfortable. Like I was fucking miserable. I felt sick and just gross. And I was asking Adam, like, how long does this last? Like, when is this going to go away? It's like, like, when is it going to be done? Yeah, because I was Ugh. like, it felt so, like, I stopped hitting it, and I still felt like that for, like, at least 10 minutes after. It was gross. Like, it was just nasty. So, fuck yeah. nicotine. I just can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do it. Can't do it. It's never been for me. But do I think weed is addictive? Sure. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, would I say, I would argue that I'm a bit dependent on it. I agree about myself. I agree about you and myself. I think like there is a level of dependence <laughs> on it. But I also think that it's like there's a lot worse things to be dependent on. I mean, you Yeah, beat and like your also what you need to alcohol. Un- like ahead. that's a big thing. Like you you took something that was so bad for you completely out of your life. So it's like, yeah. So like weed's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Like z- literally, alcohol has zero benefits. Zero, zero benefits, except for maybe like you have a good night with your friends. Yeah. Also, um, that's something big that happened since we've been here is that you hit a year hit a sober year. from alcohol, which is so well, amazing. So much has happened. It's great. I know. It's crazy. It's been a long time. I'm sorry, yes. guys. Thanks for coming back. Uh, but I hit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for hanging out. But I hit a full year of no alcohol and i'm so proud of myself and i've been literally posting it everywhere talking about it to everyone who will listen and like that's just now my personality so i love that so much for you because you fucking you did that shit and like i'm i'm so proud of you i know that was fucking hard and it is so inspiring i know you're inspiring to me i know you're like such an inspiration to so many people and I love that you're spreading the word about that because yeah it's like alcohol is so bad for us like it just doesn't it like it can really fuck you up in so many ways if you let it and so yeah I'm really proud of you and I'm really happy for you and I hope that other people yeah I've been getting yeah no I've been getting some messages from other people and uh they're like oh you inspired me to switch cameras but they said like oh you inspired me to start my sobriety journey i love that. um and i'm just like that is like my greatest impact on anyone's 100%. life ever in history like yes. thank you <laughs> i love that you so see, much that you're getting that from people because you deserve it yeah do you want to do it um do you just i go? do want to switch it the battery or i camera? don't have another battery right oh, now okay. yeah camera i should have charged both the batteries but i didn't it's not even letting me switch it. Oh fucker! Okay. Devin's like, let me click this right now. <laughs> um, wait, well, well, during that very short break, Magdazel was describing how her microphone sounded when she used it on Did Twitch. That just recorded. <laughs> what? Did that get recorded? No. Wait, okay. maybe it is. Wait, but look at it could because look at the no, it didn't. The very very end of it, maybe anyway sorry continue i was just saying how you were you did a really funny rendition of how your microphone sounded when you used it on twitch yeah it was bad 
anyways, what were we talking about before my camera died? We were talking about how you are such an inspiration to people. Right, um, how I'm that bitch and how I will always continue to be that bitch. Right, right, yeah, right. Forever, right. yeah. Love that Been for that me. bitch, still that bitch. Will forever, will forever be forever. that bitch. <laughs> right. Um, no, yeah. You were saying that you've inspired other people to give up alcohol. And I think that's yeah, so cool. I think that's so cool. Um, in other news, like there's so, literally so much that happened in my own personal drama life. My nephew got kidnapped for like a month. I'm not going to like, I don't know. Like, I feel like the, a whole episode needs to be dedicated to that. And I, that's not this one. Maybe the next one. we can No, talk about I don't that. think I, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that we should talk about that in detail for no. legal he reasons. He has full custody. Okay. Maybe. Well, hey, I mean, it is a <laughs> He didn't fucking show up story. to any of the hearings. She hasn't showed up to anything. He has yeah. full custody. Okay, so next episode, we are going to talk about that because that it is like TLC crazy drama. It is Lifetime movie, full blown Lifetime movie. And with, with a happy ending at the end, because your happy brother ending. has full custody. He does. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's like something. I, and Joya already knows all the details, because obviously I called her like every fucking day telling her what was happening. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And it was so scary and just, yeah. Oh, I, rage inducing. I've never felt so yeah. much rage in my life. Un, unfiltered, raw rage. Yeah. Oh, I wanted yeah. blood. I wanted uh, I blood. But the best part is that he is freaking safe at home. Mm -hmm. Yes. In, yeah, a great, wonderful environment. Per guy with the, with the best anti Mac Mac ever. <laughs> and that, and I'm literally so fun. I'm the best. Lol. I um I do this new thing where I just like speak really highly of myself like a man. I have the confidence yeah. of a man going into things. Like today, I had to drill into glass for my little 420 project video. And yeah, you hear that drill into glass. That sounds insane, right? Yeah. I went in there you and I said, literally, a bit? I said, I don't even have a backup bottle. I'm so confident I'm going to be able to do this my first try. Like, let's go. And I did it. A regular metal yeah. bit? Is that what you use? No, I used a diamond something. It was oh, okay. it's made for cutting glass and right. and other things. Um, that's amazing. I can't Thank believe you. you're a little Bob the Builder over there. That's crazy. Yeah, I had a drill. I was I was going ham. I'm like so fucking handy now. I can do anything. That's how I feel. <laughs> there is such a big confidence boost in using power tools. Oh my god! Actually, I'm like, yeah. who needs a project done? I got a fully charged drill right in the other room. I can go d holes. Where do you need them? Where do yeah. you fucking need these holes? Honestly, totally. You need a nail screwed in. Zzk, zzk. Oh, oh, the power. I get why men love power tools now. I bought, I bought a drill today because my drill was broken. Um, and I pulled it out and I was like, this is nice. Mm -hmm. Seriously, this like the fucking, nice. yeah, the power. That's pretty crazy. You know, and like it's I actually was using power tools last week. I was freaking sanding. Oh, I remember furniture. you were sanding things. Yeah. So I've definitely talked about Cirrus on the podcast before. If anybody who doesn't know, I'm on the founding team of a cannabis consumption lounge opening in Denver. Um, and it's like way cooler than your typical weed lounge. So I would love to see you all there when we open up in the fall. And you'll definitely see Mac Dizzle there. So maybe yeah. you can come see Mac Dizzle. But anyway, maybe. we were sanding furniture for Cirrus. And that was a fucking task. It was like 20 chairs and this like big giant table, like a 10 foot table. Wow. And it was. Um, That's hard yeah. work. You have to put your back into it. It's not the machine doing everything. You have to actually like put pressure on it. 100%. Especially on that table. It was like we had to really get the table because of the yeah. finish that was on it. And like you literally had to like fucking. Like the whole thing. <laughs> it was crazy. Did you feel uh, powerful? I did. Absolutely. And then I also like, you know, like how like after a day of hard labor yeah. like you just feel so like you're tired as fuck but mm -hmm. it's like damn i really put in the fucking work mm -hmm. today 
I think we feel that way because we don't have to do it very often. Right. I feel like the people who do that daily, they're like, what the fuck is going (laughs) on? Another day and I'm not fucking dead. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just so tired and their feet hurt and their hands Like, you know the dads that fall asleep, like, on the couch, like... Those them. They're the construction worker dads. Shout out to yeah. them because uh no. I'm you glad that they discriminate gonna... against me on construction sites. I don't want to go there. Just me though. Honestly. Don't discriminate against other women. Let them let them do it. Right. If there's a woman showing up to a construction site, no, she's built different. She's not Period. like us. She's not Period. like look at me. She's not like us. All right. Yeah. She's a different yeah. breed of woman and we love and stand her and we stand all breeds of women. And you let's just let her hire her. You, better you should hire, hire her, her because she's going to be good at her job. All right. Yeah. Promise. Honestly, she's going to give uh, it Don't. Her if I wander onto a construction site, don't give me a fucking job. Maybe a secretary. I can handle that. Paperwork. You yeah. know. Doing math little... and drilling and dirt and heavy things and splinters, gloves, hard boots, helmets. All of those things. None of those things sound glamorous Heavy to vest. Me. Yuck. tool belt that's not sexy well that's not sexy. To somebody so somebody somewhere it is but uh it's not for me and it's, it's not, not for my you. fantasy no i'll tell Neither you is what it my. my fantasy involves like tutus and ballerinas and then silk ribbons and 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 glitter and pink and all of the fun beautiful things yes <laughs> not a tool insight a uh, tool mm-hmm. in the sense of like frill. Mm. T U L L E. Yes. Tools. Yes. Those two are fine. Yes. All right. What kind of tool? What, did are you, you have anything else rip? on your list? Yeah, I'm taking another rip. Well, actually, I was going to say that I forgot to say to get on the serious wait list. So, I, oh, like yes. I said, I'm opening up a consumption lounge and we're pulling reservations directly from the waitlist also the waitlist just helps us like prove to investors that people really want something like this which i think they do in general and they do um uh, they do right so um we'll put it in like the description or maybe the pinned comment or something but you can find the link down below yes. sign up with your email please um do it. Any, let me let me go back to my list that i um yeah uh no everything we <laughs> everything that was we on my list everything. we talked about we yeah, talk, it's we literally we didn't really t- talk about Biden dropping out, but I guess I'll just say thank God. Yeah, right. I and mean, I'll leave hey. it at that. And I'll yeah. leave it at that. I'll do respect uh, to the man. I mean, yes. Thank you for your service. You've done a lot for this country. And I don't doubt that he's bed. literally take. Please take a nap. Please take a fucking nap. <laughs> let's, say, I would okay, never let's get you never home, work- Grandma. Here's the fucking thing. I would never work my grandpa that hard. And he is somebody's grandpa. Like, mm-hmm. just take a nap. Buddy. And he's not like somebody's, like, 60-year-old grandpa where it was, oh, like, was you know. Grand- my grandpa was no. his age and just died. Yeah. I am he's say, my gone. grandpa's. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. Good thing. And I'm trying to say that but- he's not mentally competent to do to like to exist and Um, what i'm saying is to lead this country we need somebody who can coherently speak and and present themselves in a way that doesn't look like they're in a decline and he was not able to do that at this time and it also sucks because he has a stutter like he's had a stutter his whole life yeah and he overcame it in his you know in his younger years and as he's gotten older it's gotten worse obviously yeah and so that on top of it's the it's like it makes it i think even if he didn't have a stutter i think maybe he would still be a little bit slow but because he does have a stutter there's the the brain connecting to the mouth thing is but and know, but i'm also going to note while i i really think that it's a bit out of touch to have world leaders that old because yes. you just grew up in such a different time and you've experienced so many different things and i'm not saying that makes you bad to do the job but i feel like we need people who have a stake in what's gonna happen yeah like yes. i need somebody who yes. Yes. that's a good way to put it you know like somebody who's gonna be affected by the decisions that they're making that's that's who right. i would like to be here like they actually have to be like yeah. oh fuck i am um, they actually have to live in the world that they create the yes live I want with them the to consequences live yes yeah. 
that. That's a really not good just way like, to put it. Not just like leave your rules and then you're out. Like, please, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, yeah. And it's so funny, too, to see how the tides have shifted. Like, the tables have turned. Like, when Trump got shot, I was like, oh, fuck, dude. It's done. Like, we're cooked. He's going to win. We're fucked. Yes. Like, Trump is going to be president. And then Aaron <laughs> and I were talking about how there was probably many conversations about oh you muted oh my god i thought my i thought my freaking thing disconnected um there I, there had to been multiple conversations in those rooms about what is the perfect timing to announce to have him step down and announce Kamala as the nominee like what is the length of time that people will stay behind her and she'll only get better versus like like when people turn against her you know what I mean? Because that's a risk with any. There's still so much any, time for that to happen. Right. But and what, it, I don't as think, of now. I don't think, I think he was stubborn. I don't think it was a coordinated, tactful thing. I think we have a lot of faith in the government that is misplaced. I don't, I don't think, think it's right. faith. I don't. I think, think. I think you are are not thinking about how fucking <coughs> manipulative and calculated all those people. Are. I, yeah, I just don't think they're that bright. That's the thing. I don't think they're bright they enough are. to be manipulative. But, they but here's are. the thing: humans are really bad at keeping secrets. Yeah, they are. They are. But we're talking about the highest fucking position in the richest, most powerful country on the planet so i think if anybody could keep secrets it would be those circles of people and also they didn't actually keep the secret because there was a couple days before there was an article that came out that said that biden is gonna step down and then yeah. even before that there was like a week before people that, were whispering some, about it a lot totally well i saw something like a week before that on moshe's page so mm -hmm. that's a journalist that we both follow that's like very much verified sources no, i would never think yeah. that anything on mosh would be no fake he news. he he's late to post certain things because he makes sure he checks yeah and makes sure so, that it's not fake right so there was something on there it was on cnn there were commentators that were from biden's camp that literally said we believe that president obama is the driving force be behind trying to get biden to step down and they didn't say it in a way that was like, oh, he's coming to his friend, like, Joe, you need to do this. They said it in a way that he was like rallying behind Biden's back. And so I had this moment of like, oh, my God, like just like really thinking about like how much fucking shit like that probably goes on behind the scenes. We have yeah. no idea. And yeah. no one ever finds out. Yeah. Like we found out I about some that big there was shit, a huge but... coordinated movement amongst Democrats and actually Nancy Pelosi was about to go off publicly and tell him to step the fuck down. Yeah, literally oh, like dude. like the day after he announced it, she was supposed to like go public and like say something, I think. Um wow. so I know that there is but I, but for you for for them to be like okay, he's going to step down right here. I think he was stubborn. I think he was stubborn and he stepped down at that time. I really do. We I also saw something that was like they waited until after the Republican National Convention so that they could spend three days just fucking wrecking him and talking so much shit about him as the as the <gasps> That's you know what I mean. Actually, kind of valid. Did, and then also, there's somebody who, um, like some fucking random ass person who was suing Biden because they had a bunch of "Let's Go Brandon" merch and like other fuck Joe Biden stuff they bought to resell. And now it's like not worth anything because Joe Biden's not the nominee. How and are so you going to sue him for that? That's not his right. fault. It's really Nobody stupid. told you to buy that. Yeah. Um, and Nobody I'm sure told you to buy that. And actually, let me let me fact check that because that's hilarious. Man, suing Biden over. Let's go, Brandon merch. Okay, so this could be not a real story. No. Okay, not real. See, it's and not that real. is nope. And that's so, why we but fact anyway. check. Right, exactly. So that's yes. Don't believe everything you see on the internet, people. I literally, and me yeah. saying like thirty minutes ago, like I try to be really careful about what I consume. At least that's not like a big thing. Like that's just like it was. A silly and you checked thing. it before you made yeah. you spread it. You checked it. Right before you spread it, check it. It's like herpes. Check you gotta it you check it. it. Check it before you spread it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I was gonna say but, something else before I started getting gross. Um, we were talking about 
like them waiting until after Trump fucking yeah, talked a bunch else. of shit about Biden. Oh, well, I'm interested to see um, how Kamala comes mm. out in the next bit because she was a pretty hideous DA in California from what I heard. You know, I've also seen some people fact checking that as well because I think that has been what people have they always bring up about her said that about she her was, like, exactly keeping people of color locked up in California. Yeah. And you know what? It's like I want to give her the benefit of the doubt, but that it really could be true. The fucking prison machine in this country, but especially California is what do they call that? The prison industrial prison industrial complex. Pipe. Yes. Um, as a sociology major, I cannot believe like I couldn't find that in my brain, but that's okay. We we make mistakes and we move on. You smoked a lot of weed um, today. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know what? Actually, I'm starting to feel a little bit normal now. Okay. I was definitely. I'm starting to come back, and so which means <sighs> in a little bit, I could do another one. A so a she's <laughs> in the room with us, and she can leave the room again. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's so funny. Um, I'm Googling her record on weed convictions because I saw somebody say that there actually wasn't that many people, but we'll have to do some more research on this. We'll have to do some research on that before yeah. we go ahead and, and just, you know, Talk about give a it. full stand, yeah. but you know. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, pretty uh, crazy times we're living in. Crazy times. I, yeah, I've just become numb to the historical events. They're just like regular events now. Yeah. They're just regular. Just Did regular. you see? Um, so the Olympics are happening right now. That's also another time that my fucking country pride really comes out. I'm like, fuck USA. everybody else. <laughs> yes, yeah, like, dude, seriously, like, USA. Um, oh, fuck, what was I going to say? Oh, so the um, they spent like billions of dollars on cleaning the river over there so that they could have the olympic um like some it's not swimming but like something water else. like the the rafting yes. shit that they do yeah and apparently it like still like it it's wasn't disgusting. it wasn't so i guess they had like rain or something so recent rain like brought a bunch of stuff into the river but i thought that was kind of funny like what billions are they doing of dollars in that river I mean, it's fucking Paris. Paris is fucking disgusting. Mm. Like, really, it's like, you know, New York City. Like, there's parts that are, like, clean. No offense, no offense, but if there was a river in New York City? There is. It's called the Hudson River, and it's disgusting. No one gets in it. No one gets It's not a swimming river. Yeah, Like, like you can be on a boat on it, but it's not. It's like Long Beach. It's not a swimming beach. Well, yeah. You're right, I guess. That's where all the ports are. Yeah. The carnival cruises. Right. Because, uh, yeah, you're when I think of Long here, Beach. You I'm... might go in the water in Long Beach, but if you're from here, like, just go to fucking, just go to Malibu, Newport. Actually, Malibu yeah. is one of the dirtiest beaches if you want to know how dirty the water gets in the summer. It's really, oh, really? really dirty. Yeah. I didn't know that. Like, toxically dirty. But, oh. like, if you want good beaches in California, like, Newport, Huntington. Yeah. Huntington uh, no, um, San Clemente, honestly, San is Clemente, San Diego so beaches good. are really, really nice. The San Diego beaches Peach, are, San too. San Pedro is good. Oh, San yeah. Pedro, yeah. It's yeah, better. I mean, that's LA. It's I better. Would t- any but San Diego really beach. beach you can go on. It's all rocks in San Pedro. It's not like a beach oh, beach. Oh, I see. It's all Is rocks. that where we, is that where the sunken, sunken city is? Yes. Yes, Isn't that yes. okay? Well, it's like a we filmed a couple times there. Yes, that's where um, our picnics, my picnic spot is. Yeah, is it? Oh my god, because I haven't been back since we. I haven't been back for at least five years, mm. like at least, unless you took the picnic spot the last, we went to. Yeah, it was the picnic spot we went to when we filmed that video, and that was easily like four years ago. Oh, I'm thinking of was it? No, mm-hmm. the picnic yes. we filmed a picnic like semi recently, in the last like two years. Am I just am I tripping? <laughs> Do You're I have no concept tripping. of time? You have no concept of time. My hair has been pink for was pink two years ago. And it wasn't pink when we went to do the picnic. No, thing? girl, I hadn't even no, met because... Rajul yet. No, yes, I still you had. The had. So I was living in California still. 
I think honestly, so, yeah. time really does blend together. It's actually kind of fucking. Gnarly. But maybe not. Maybe maybe I have. I think you're wrong. Time. I think. I think. I think I. You're I don't usually, even know what we... when it comes to like directions and time, you're usually right more right than me. I could. It, this could be a. You I'm know, just like a goldfish. I just forget things. <laughs> a goldfish. Honestly, yeah, relatable. Yeah. I do forget things too. It's it's fucking bad. Uh, should we um open up? So we're probably at what Dev like forty five minutes or something. Forty five. All right. Forty five. We have an Emma the asshole submitted. There's like a lot actually. Oh my god. Fuck Love yeah. that you guys have been Wired. submitting to here. By the way. Love. Yes. This is we so are going fun to for start us. Answering. Love. Oh my god. I love it. Yay. <laughs> okay. All right. I found a good one. Uh, well, I think it's a good one. I don't know. <clears throat> okay. Hey, Mac and Joya. So my story is about my ex-boyfriend. My ex-boyfriend was a stoner, football player, cop kid, wannabe thug, and Gemini. Great mix, right? Great. Well, we were together for four years. Oh. Our relationship started of started off good. Mind you, this relationship started at the beginning of COVID. We were doing great until he moved two cities away. We figured it out, sort of. And then fast forward to the end of COVID, we're going back to school for our last two years, and he decided to transfer back so our relationship could go on better. Mind you, I told him we were doing fine and that he should stay at the school he was at because they could get him a scholarship to UCLA, his dream school. And he said, no, it's my decision keep that in mind. So we go on for the year and we get to summer right before we start our last year. And I go hang out with my friend Jasmine. She tells me after I've been talking about him for a minute that, that he had cheated on me with her and had been constantly cheating on me with other girls. So we called him and he denied like I expected him to. So I had her send me the messages and all the proof of all the hickeys on her neck. Oh, fuck. We went to his house because she had his address because she had to go pick him up. And we show him the proof. He tried to lie to my face and say that it's just a guy thing. Every guy does it. And he admitted that he cheated on me and that he missed me and loved me and that he can't live without me. First of all, fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. Even though... He constantly would say I was cheating on him because he was cheating on me and had a guilty conscience, though he was cheating on me the whole time after he cheated on me the first time and I caught him. It got to the point where he ended up pushing me out of his car after taking my phone and chasing me around the house, my house. Uh, well, no one was home. I finally got rid of him. Sadly, I couldn't get a restraining order against him because he tried to say I committed assault and battery on him. But yeah, that's my crazy story. By the way, I love you guys so much. And congrats, Joya, on coming back to YouTube. Thanks. Thank you so much for that at the end. Um, I feel like I, there, this story is like a out. tale as old as time. Like, Hear me out. She's the asshole. Why? I'm joking. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm like, you better fucking – what are you talking about? Why would um, you victimize him like that? Like, yes, all men cheat. Like – they all cheat, and you have to accept that. Just be a good woman, show up, and just be grateful that he chose you. Honestly. Were you doing I, enough I, for him? It's LOL. Crazy. That, some girls actually talk like that, and I want to punch I them know. in the neck, right? Solid center in the throat. Just shut up! Stop speaking! It's literally, yeah. Violence. I can't believe. If anybody ever. I mean, I'd like to think that, you know, anybody listening or watching this knows that if a guy or anyone tells you that everyone does it, everyone cheats, that's not true. It's not true. That is absolutely not true. It's not true. And fuck this guy. But what I was going to say about this, the whole story is like, she's like, he cheated on me. He's a fucking asshole, whatever. He also like pushed me out of his car after taking my phone and then... She tried to get a restraining order and he said that he, she committed assault and battery on him, which, you know what? She probably did. She probably fucking beat, fucking hit him or something to in defense 
like I just like p- this makes me so sad that people have to deal with this like there's it's so cool. fucking- I literally had such a similar story when I was younger yeah such a similar yeah. story I like tried to break up with this guy well first of all he was constantly accusing me of cheating on him and he was always cheating on me I was always finding evidence in his phone and bringing it up and like he's and then he would literally like call me crazy and be like this is crazy i'm like she's talking about sucking your dick oh my god what do you god. mean i'm crazy that's like, like just gaslighting like, 101 literally it was like it got to the point where it was just irrefutable and he would like beg me to stay and it was just like a constant cycle of him doing that and i hope that you never date anyone like that again because i never did yeah i ran far far away you from men like yeah. that there's m- so many people out there in the world who value loyalty and value their partner and would never mm-hmm. do anything like that. Mm-hmm. My cousin actually told me she was like probably 17 or 18 at the time and I was like 11 and she told me like the only time that a guy will uh, what's the word accuse you of something if you've never done anything is if they're fucking around on you. She was like cheaters accuse people of cheating and so yeah know and that if any guy ever really accuses you people accuse people of such things as well people that have experienced that before and i was like 11 at the time so it's like there was no like you know but yeah i mean i think like there's like a level of a teenage boy that is i mean we don't know if they're teenagers i guess it sounds like they were I in like late teens early 20s if they weren't yeah college. yeah yeah maybe well, she said he transferred schools. So they're in high school, actually, because she said that he was – or maybe it couldn't be a college first couple transfer? years of college, she maybe. He, she, he could get a, she was talking about getting a scholarship to UCLA. Which to is UCLA, right. So they could be – It might be a Jake Jr. Call. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Young. They're definitely young. And so if you're – if you're in a relationship with a freaking dude who had like that, 21 year old, yeah, there's, and they're accusing you of cheating. They're really cheating on you. Fuck that guy. Well, I don't think that's always true, though. For a child, guess- for an 18 to 21 year old, you don't think the 18 and 21 year olds can feel insecure? And like project it that on because I was accusing boys of cheating on me all the time when I was eighteen, and I wasn't cheating. Yeah, were they cheating on you? No, none of them. No, you know my ex. Do you think he was? Oh no, but that's not. That's... I accused him constantly, constantly for like two years straight. <laughs> for two, okay. There's more years than two years. And I'm like, no, it's not always true. Sometimes they're just insecure, Joya. Me. Yeah. Because I was wildly insecure because I had been cheated on and I was very jaded in that sense. So I was coming out of that that hurt. I started dating him like right after that. So. Right. You know, that was just very much on my brain. I didn't trust people. My trust with men had been broken, shattered. What did he do to make you accuse him? Was he like not responding or? Nothing. Literally nothing. So I how did you have any these... merit behind your argument? I didn't have like, merit. I I was you just jaded, said I think you're Joya. cheating on me. Yeah, I was you insecure. Would... I didn't. You didn't give any evidence myself. or anything. No. <laughs> what evidence do I need? I was had a feeling. I was. It was I, the universe told me that I was nothing and that this is what I deserved, and so I projected that onto him and accused him all the time. Yeah, it is. It's crazy to to me to think about you accusing that person of cheating. Yeah, all the time. I got all of his yeah. text messages forwarded to my phone. I signed into his Apple ID so that I would get all of his texts. Oh yes, my! And crazy. you never, you never found anything. You never found never. anything like never. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Sick. I actually Sick. saw to well, to kind of flip the coin on that. I saw an Instagram post recently that was like, when you're in like a, a relationship like with a lot of trust, like and you don't have to worry about or you don't worry about your partner cheating and whatever, your like biggest fear is that they're gonna die. Yes, and I. And I definitely was like, literally, I saw that on. So Adam, when I was gone last week fell asleep super early like I had talked to him like 6 p.m 
Mm-hmm. And I didn't talk to him again until the next morning. And I was like on, at the airport and I was like, I need you, you to respond to me because this is not, I cannot not like, because I need breathing, proof of please. life. Help me. I need breathing. to know that you're okay. I need, to, I need you to FaceTime me and actually show me the breath from your chest. Thank yeah, you. like, yes, I need to watch you. Yes. Need to see I need to watch you yeah. take t- three deep breaths. Yes. He has his, he's going on his bachelor party this weekend. And I literally oh. was like, I need multiple people to know that I need, I need proof of life on a regular basis. Like every four hours. I need At a, least. yes, he's good. He's having fun. Yeah. Please. So. <clears throat> uh, yes. Anyway. And I'm so happy to be in a happy and healed place in a great relationship where yeah. also my biggest fear is him. Dying. something happening to, yeah yes right. <laughs> like i just yeah. don't want him to be hurt yeah uh, uh, wow this uh, was such a good episode and then next week we're talking about your nephew's kidnapping which is crazy it is and- insane what happened bro insane behavior oh let I'm me take to, a like, you want to take a rip yeah what'd a rip. you say i'm gonna have to like write notes for the episode so yes i, can, like, I know. keep everything in order um yeah. I think also looking through our well, I guess we always talked on FaceTime, but I was gonna say looking through our text messages might help. Yeah. Well, I know I, I pretty much I've told the story more than once. So at this point I basically have a general topography of the map. Okay, but, gotcha. Yeah, like I just need to like keep my thoughts in order because I have so much ADHD. Overwhelming abundance of ADHD. Cheers. Cheers. I <laughs> love you. Thank you so much to everybody that's been or that's submitted to our um, yeah, question man, box. Yeah, Keep going in there. Box. Please. Yeah. Yes. Go ham. Send us your drama spill, so that we spill can the tea talk about it. With, spill the tea with two girls, one ball. Spill that's the fucking says. tea. Uh, uh, well, yay. All right. We'll see you next time, guys. Make a choice. We will. Yourself, get to each other. Thank you for coming. We love you so much. Thanks for sticking around, even after Thank our little you. breaky break. Thank you. And we hope you enjoyed our 100th episode because we, we put in some blood, sweat, and tears physically for that. Oh, I actually sweat so much for that episode. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. So if you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. And also go watch the content with both of us on each of our YouTube channels. Also, just go watch Mike Dizzle's channel in general because that shit is popping off. Go Gag. watch Joy's channel in general because she's motherfucking back. Period. And she is. Ah, oh, yay. Okay. Love you guys. Love you. Bye. Bye.